This video is brought to you by Greater Commons. Greater learning, greater opportunities, greater life. Visit us at greatercommons.com. So we're going to see the commands we need just for basic GitHub stuff. And uh, to make sure you're doing GitHub correctly, you first create a repo at your GitHub account. And so I'd go github.com forward slash goes to 11. And in here, go laying web. Oh, I'd create a new repo. So, new repository. Give it some name. Temp example. Create that repository. Okay. And then on my terminal, we have our Go workspace. So, set up GitHub with Go. And uh, that is uh, here. We go into documents and then inside documents I have my go workspace and then inside there I have three folders bin package and source and then I go in and source is where all my source code is right I go into and package will be where like stuff that you've already used has been pre-built I've already used this package before go pre-builds it and stores a little archive file there binary so if you have to rebuild that package, oh, I've already built that binary for that package. I don't have to build again. So that's what's inside package. And bin is if you build a binary using go install, it puts it in bin. So that's what bin stands for binary. So I cd into source. And then inside there, I'm going to see different choices like websites. And this is like package management combined with namespacing. Okay. And so it provides a namespace for different people's code. And you identify that code by a domain or something unique. So if we do it by domain, we cd into GitHub, cd into GitHub, and, uh, and then we see a whole bunch of user accounts, including mine, goes to 11. And then I'd cd in, and goes to 11 is where? Right there. Goes to 11. So then it's cd and it goes to 11. I'm the only one almost with uppercase. Should be lowercase. Mistake I made early on. cd and it goes to 11. And, uh, and then inside here I can list out my, my repositories. All right, but I'm going to make a new one. So make dir because this is where it goes to 11. It's like it's matching my GitHub thing. Right? GitHub.com goes to 11 and now my repos. And I called that repo a temp example. So I make an, a, a directory temp example and change into temp example. Right? And so now I'm inside here and I could do an ls la. And I'd want to add a git ignore file. And so to add that git ignore file, if I'm on a Unix type machine, POSIX type machine, Mac, Linux, Unix, uh, then I could do it with nano. And I could just say nano.git ignore. And I'm going to go into a little text editor. If you're on Windows, you got to open up your editing environment. Atom, Sublime, WebStorm, uh, what else? Um, VS Code. Open that up. Create a dot git ignore. That's it. File. And you're going to drop this into it. So just go to go back to my GitHub repo. Go to Golang Web Dev. Scroll down. Get this git ignore code. So that file you saw me flash on quickly, .git ignore. I'm just going to get the one that McLeod uses because I'm learning. And I paste all that in, and then I exit and save it. And that was Control-X to get out. And I hit Enter to write that file. Now if I do an ls-la, I've got my git ignore. I'm now getting set up. I'm now ready to make this a GitHub repo. I'm going to do a git init. It's going to initialize it as an empty repo, ls-la. And I could do a git status, and I could see, ah, it wants to add the git ignore file. This is something that's changed in this repo, right? So I'm going to do a git add-all and git commit-m. First commit or whatever adds git ignore file. Right, and now I need to come over here to where I'm setting that up. And we've done all this stuff in our own way, but this last line is just easier to copy. And this is going to connect my git 
repo on my computer with the remote one, the origin from which everybody syncs and pushes their code. That's why it's called remote origin. Hit enter there and then get this one and put that in and hit enter there. So those last two lines, put those in. And now just push that git ignore file up to here. So if I go look at that, that git ignore file's there. So now the way I'm going to use GitHub is I could, you know, in my text editor, just create, you know, you know, new, you know, this would be like index.html or something, and you know, uh, hello world or whatever, and then exit and yes, yeah, save it, and so now I have ls-la and I've got my .git file, which is what I got when I did git init. I have my .git, and that's what makes it a git repo is that .git file. And then I have my dot git ignore, and that tells it don't worry about these other files. I don't want you uploading them or tracking them. And then I also created my index.html. And so now I'm going to show you the commands you need for just generally working with GitHub. And the first one is git status. So if you're taking notes, you'd write down git status. But you can watch this video later. And that tells you, hey, something needs to be committed. And so git add dash dash all adds everything. And now if I do a git status, so you'd also write down that in your notes, git add dash dash all. And there's different ways to do it. Some people like dash a, right? I like dash dash all. Uh, just works for me. So now I, uh, I see, okay, did I get status? And after I added, it changed it from red to green. That's because there's like a staging area. So you have files that change you can add them to a staging area and just add some of them. So you can say, hey, these three files, and then you could commit them and say, those had to do with changing the login procedures. And then you could add the other three files that had changed to the staging area, and you can say these three files had to do with the user profile. And so you've got the changed files, you, and then you do a git add dash dash all. It adds them to the staging area. I could have added them by file name, just one at a time. And then from the staging area, you give it a message and you commit it. All right? git commit dash m, which stands for message, adds first uh, HTML page index.html. And then you do git push. And then now this code would be up over here. And there's that index.html, hello world. And so it's keeping track, too, of my commits. So adds first HTML page, and I can see, oh, this is the page that got added. OK, cool. And uh, this is version control software, VCS, version control software. And I said that with a question. I'm like, is it VSC? For some reason, that was coming to my mind. And so then, right, ls-la. Here's your workflow, basically. So you create a file, you know, and you're going to do this in your editor, right, where you'd create your files. And so I'm just using nano to create the file. And uh, so I've created a new file about. Now when I do a git status, hey, things have changed. So git add dash dash all, git commit dash m, adds about HTML page, and then git push. It's just basically git add dash dash all, git commit, dash m, message, and git push. And then git status. And everything's up to date. So those are like the four commands. Git status, oh, stuff's changed. Git add, dash dash all, git commit, dash m, you know, whatever the message is, git push, done. And so that's how you use GitHub, just basically, you know, basic sort of stuff to keep track of what you're doing. And you should commit every time you kind of hit a little bit of a thing is finished. Like, oh, changed it from recursion to a for loop. That's a good place to do a commit, you know? And so you kind of did a little change, push it up. Did a little change, push it up. How many people that was helpful to you? How many people knew all that? Yeehaw. Cool. Good for you guys.